Hey guys, how are you all doing? It's been a while since we've done something stupid. So today we're once again, and I'm saying again because we've actually done this before, at a much smaller scale, making our own DIY VR headset. The Oculus Quest 2 is essentially a glorified Android smartphone. As many of you probably know, it's running Android. It's got an XR2, a processor very similar to the ones found in phones, and it's got six gigs of RAM. What is up guys, my name is Mystical, and as usual, in case you guys like this one, make sure to slap the red button down below and let's get right into the video. A lot of phones nowadays are really powerful. And when I say that, I mean it. The Oculus Quest 2 has a single panel display, meaning it no longer has two displays splitting your eyes apart. Meaning no proper IPD adjustment, but what that also means is it's even more of a glorified phone than it ever was. Phones nowadays coming in with 4K panels at 120 hertz, which is exactly what the Quest 2 has. With apps like V-Ridge or Riftcat, we can totally just plug that into Steam VR and make it work. However, last time when we did this, I do believe that we didn't have proper tracking. We didn't have positional tracking, we didn't have hand controllers, we had nothing. But I do believe that I'm not the only person thinking, if we've got these really powerful phones in our pockets, and the Quest 2 is essentially a glorified version of that, what's stopping us from just using what we already have and adding to it. So what we're going to be doing today is hopefully getting Steam VR to run on our phones, and then we're going to add positional tracking, full six off with the index controllers. Because you know, if someone wants to begin, they might want to get themselves two base stations, some trackers and index controllers. No need to buy a headset, right? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Let's begin. So now we have our phone, but that is obviously not going to be enough. So I pulled up to my local Dunn stores and picked up their cheapest VR headset. And of course, this not actually being a VR headset, but only a shell that you put your phone into. It is incredibly uncomfortable and my nose was way too large to fit in it. So uh, we fixed that by drilling a hole in it. Either way, this cost me about, I'd say 15 euro, something along those lines. You can probably find them on Wish for like five. It's going to be enough for the purpose of this video. So I'm gonna go through really quickly what to do and how to get this working in case you want to get it working, but please don't. <laughs> what you're going to need is some form of Vive Tracker, Steam VR. VR tracker. Then you want to get its ID by going into manage trackers inside Steam VR and grabbing that slash devices file path. Then what you want to do is you want to grab this little line of code and paste it into your Steam VR config file, which is located in your Steam directory. I'm actually going to leave a link to a video down below, which I actually followed to get this working much, much easier for you guys than me trying to explain it. But once you have that, you know, replace it and uh, you actually should have everything working. It sounds simple when I say it, but it's not. Let's move on to the actual fun. It works. It actually works. My phone connects to my PC and there's very little latency, of course, Wi-Fi 6. And now the headset is gathering its positional data from the Tundra Tracker, which of course I use to make this as cheap as possible. But once again, this experiment has not really any cost comparative measures. <laughs> but it works. The headset is now the Tundra Tracker. That's where it's getting its positional data from. So we have full six off tracking. And because the Tundra Tracker is Lighthouse Tracked, it automatically means we don't have to play around with calibrating our index controllers in any way because they just pair right over to the Tundra Tracker, grab their positional data and compare themselves to each other, making everything perfect. And if the FOV inside the phone was a little bit wider, I did try to record on the phone, but uh, weird things happened. Then of course we would have a much funner time, but I played some Beat Saber. It was playable, playable, and playable doesn't necessarily mean good, but it was playable. As you can see, I did manage to pass some levels. I don't normally get motion sick. This made me motion sick. That should tell you a ton. Then we hopped into the forest just so that I could try out, you know, cutting down some trees, playing around more with that six off positional data. Again, worked no problem. At this point, you get what I'm trying to say. It worked just like a Steam VR tracked headset with lighthouses. And that technically sounds really good, but then you realize it's a phone inside of like a 15 euro headset, which is falling apart. And you realize, oh, lovely. Then of course we had to hop into VR chat. I mean, come on, we had to. It's simply because this is the easiest way for me to show you the sixed off positional data of this headset and that it's working. Of course, VR chat decided to recognize my index controller as a Tundra tracker because why not? But other than that, it worked no problem whatsoever. You can see we had positional data sixed off tracking on a phone. I mean, it's cool. It's cool, but it's useless. So, I mean, if you guys like fun, weird, jank weird experiments then go ahead try this yourself i mean do let me know what kind of jank ways you guys ran vr in i love hearing your guys' stories down in the comment section below and this is certainly one of the most jank ways i have ever ran vr i really want to see somebody make ar core work for positional tracking on a phone i think that would be really cool but other than that 
there you guys have it. It's possible. It works. So here we are, the end of the experiment. If I were to tell you that this was quick, easy, and everyone should do it, that would be a lie. Because you know what they say, just because you can do something doesn't always mean you should. And I think this is one of those cases. This was a horrible experience, and it was a horrible experience for many different reasons. Partially because this headset is half falling apart, and also because this is a phone. It doesn't have the correct lenses and FOV like a proper VR headset. That being said, did it work? Yes. Is it a way to start off on VR? It's certainly a much better way to start off than how I started off. I started off ages ago on a Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini playing with V-Ridge and PS Move controllers, one strapped to my head and the other two as controllers. This is certainly a much better way, but I mean, just the index controllers themselves and the lighthouses, they're quite expensive. And if you can afford those, you can probably shell out a little bit more for a proper VR headset. That being said, this was a fun little experiment and I am really happy that we managed to make it work. Unfortunately, it did not work with the Blackview phone that I originally wanted to make it work with as it didn't want to connect to my five gigahertz Wi-Fi. It could see my neighbor's five gigahertz Wi-Fi, but not mine. So instead, of course, we used the OnePlus 8 Pro. And I mean, come on, that was obviously going to work. 4K 120 hertz panels, I mean, that's comparable to the Quest. But trust me when I say the actual gaming quality is nowhere near it. This experiment really has no gold because I just realized that if you were to just buy all of this, you could have just bought a Quest instead and you would have had all of this for much cheaper. Yeah, this was certainly a very useless experiment experiment, but at least we had fun, right? That's all that matters. It doesn't matter how useless this is. What matters is we had fun. So thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you'll have a fantastic day or night. In case you guys do want to play Steam VR on your phone, you can always just use V-Ridge and not use positional tracking or use the PS Move, which we might try out sometime in the future. And probably thousands of other methods have come out now since I've done it that allow you to use a webcam per se for positional tracking, which would probably be again, a lot cheaper. We might honestly make a series or something trying to make a headset cheaper than the Quest 2, but for now, that's it. If you guys like this one, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, paying my bills, paying for my subscriptions and making these videos better. So thank you so much for that. In case you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick mugs down below. And um, apparently I can't say that they boost your FPS by 300% because uh, some people might think that's real, but yeah, sick mugs. <laughs> And of course, in case you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And as usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.